Today we're going to be talking about a topic that's as depressing as your bank account balance on a Monday morning. I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Not or as depressing as how some of you feel before going to this job that you hate just to pay the bills. My rock stars, we're gonna talk about how they keep us poor, but more importantly, I'm gonna share why you will never be poor again after listening to this video. From the systems that govern how we live, how we manage debt, to our lack of financial education and living up to societal expectations, as well as consumerism. I will be uncovering the many ways that we are being held back from achieving financial independence. And fear not, my rock stars, because at the end of this video, one thing is certain is that you're gonna have a much better understanding of the obstacles that are in your way and some actionable steps that you can take to take control of your financial future. So sit back, grab a pen, some paper, and get ready to learn how to break the cycle of poverty because being born poor is fate, but dying poor is a choice. I've changed for the better this time. It's so great to have you back, my rock stars. Thank you for your loyalty. Please remember that there are scammers in the comments using my face to ask you to WhatsApp, to Telegram, to email them. It's not me, it's a scam. Please report and ignore now you know what the sad thing is about today's video most of you are gonna listen to what i'm saying you're even gonna find it relatable but you won't do anything about it listening without action is pointless so i'm gonna appeal to you and ask you to not just listen to hear but listen to act and if you are ready to take action today based on what I'm about to share, please write in the comments, I will be rich. Because you know what, my rock stars, that's going to be the outcome. Class is now in session. Now the first system that I want to cover that's in our way and stopping us from being rich and by understanding this you will never be poor again is what I'm going to refer to as the debt scam. Now most of us have debt in one form or another. It could be a student loan, it could be a credit card, it could be a mortgage or it could even be your car loan. Debt in any form can be crippling and it's hard to get ahead from a financial perspective when you're constantly paying off debt every time you earn a few dollars. But here's the problem my rock stars. The system is set up in such a way that it encourages us to take more debt. Let let me give you a practical example. If you are between the ages of 18 and 19 and you go into a bank with a business plan and you say, listen, I would like a loan to start a business and I only need 20,000 US dollars. You are filled with passion and enthusiasm and it is clear from your business plan that you have a strategy for success. The bank is going to say, just fill out these forms and make sure you go and register a company because that will be critical and then you're gonna do all of that and 99% of the time that bank is not going to grant you that loan to start your business now on the contrary let's say in that same age range you go into the bank and you say to them I have no idea what I'm going to do with my life so I'm going to college to study business. Can I get a student loan for 40,000 US dollars? Not 20 this time, 40,000 US dollars. 99% of the time, the bank will say yes. And what that leads to my rock stars is that you start your life in debt. Now in the bank's defense, they're gonna argue that the business has a greater probability to fail. Because as per the BLS or the Bureau of Labor Standards in the US, as an example, only 25% of new businesses make it past 15 years. But my rock stars, what if your application would have put you in that 25%? 
on the flip side, a study that was conducted by Fidelity Investments in 2019 found that among millennials, and these were people at the time between the ages of 22 and 38, that graduated from college and are currently working, that 53% of them reported feeling financially independent. So again, in the bank's defense, 25% of the businesses will achieve success. 53% of the students will be able to achieve financial independence, which means the probability that they'll pay off their student loan is much greater. But my rock stars, listen to what Fidelity Investment defined as financial independence. It's being able to cover your basic monthly bills, having an emergency fund, being able to save a few dollars for the future, and having some money left over for discretionary spending. That sounds to me like you're going to live an average life and retire broke. While investing in a business, you're able to make passive income because you're no longer trading time for money. You can put a foundation down that will create generational wealth to provide for your kids and your grandkids. And there is the potential of being wealthy, which is much greater with a business than with education, as is proven time and time again. But my rock stars, this is exactly how financial organizations control our actions and our behavior. Have you ever wondered why there's so much emphasis on the student loan bureau and a lot less emphasis on a business loan bureau? As a matter of fact, is there even such a thing? I mean, in some countries, you have organizations that are giving out small business loans, but it's nothing compared to the effort and the investment that's going into a student loan bureau. And this, my rock stars, is exactly why I started the Rockstar Grant. And you can watch here to learn how you can get access to anywhere from 10,000 US dollars, which I intend to give per month as long as I get the views to as much as 50,000 US dollars per month in grant money to start your business, your side hustle, or even to pay for your education because I don't want you to do so with a loan. And just to give you an update, we're going to notify the finalists by the end of February and we intend to announce the winners after a pitch, or I shouldn't call you winners, but those receiving grant money in March after you have pitched your business idea. But my rock stars, the bottom line is the system is set up for us to start out with a debt. But here is how you can change that. First, you have to take responsibility. You have to practice restraint. The loan is there, but you don't have to take it, my rock stars. The second thing is you need to stop making your first financial encounter a loan. Whether it's a student loan, a vehicle loan, a mortgage to buy a house. Because my rock stars, it's a downward spiral that you're starting. So unless you have a clear line of sight to how you're going to pay off that student loan, you probably should do what I did. And I'm not here to tell you what to do just sharing my experience but I wasn't sure what I wanted to do so you know what I did my rock stars I went I worked well actually I was forced to work because I got pregnant and dropped out of school but I decided to work before continuing because I wanted to have a better understanding of the work world and as such develop a passion for something this was one of the best decisions that I ever made because after working I decided to go back to school and I had line of sight to the exact job I wanted to do and exactly how I would have paid off for a student loan if I had taken one. You need to have line of sight as to how you're going to pay off a debt, any debt for that matter, before you take out the money. The second action that you can take to not fall victim to that debt scam is to create a budget. And I have beaten this one to death on this channel as I share my budget template. And I also share that budget template in my book as well because it's so important, my rock stars. You must keep track of your income and your expenditure and manage your money to be able to know what you can afford, how much you need to save, and your goal should be to save and invest at least 50% of your income. And I know you're gonna say, oh, but I bet I don't make enough to save 50%. Well, guess what? Find new streams of income. I'm sharing here so many videos about different side hustles, business 
business ideas, figure out something you're good at and do it. You must save and invest a significant portion of your income, whether you're investing it in real estate or other portfolio income like stocks, bonds, but you must invest because you don't have enough hours in a day to trade time for money and become wealthy or even rich for that matter. To also avoid this debt scam, you need to prioritize your needs over your wants. Ask yourself, is this a necessary expense or can I do without it? And if your answer is the latter, maybe you should do without it because you're able to keep more money in your pocket and not borrow money for non-essentials. The third step you can take to avoid the debt scam is to avoid using credit cards. Or if you're gonna use them, like I do, make sure it's a rewards credit card where you get points that turn into dollars every time you use that credit card and do your best to pay off your outstanding balance so that you are never having to pay those high interest rates that are associated with credit cards. Now the second scam that is keeping us poor and why after understanding this my rock stars you will never be poor again is the consumerism scam. Consumerism promotes a culture of instant gratification, encouraging us to spend money on things we don't necessarily need or cannot afford to feel good about ourselves. It's so unfortunate, my rock stars. And you know what happens when we do this? It results in a pile of debt and financial instability. The thing is, we live in a society that tells us that we need the latest gadgets, the newest car, the trendiest clothing. We're constantly bombarded by advertisements that make us feel like we're missing out if we don't have the latest and greatest products. And FOMO, which is the fear of missing out, which I talk about in my book extensively, is one such disorder that results in us spending more than we should. The problem is that most of these products that we're buying and these things that we're consuming, most of them are very expensive and they don't bring any real happiness or fulfillment to our life. But what they do instead is they create a cycle of debt. This constant pressure, my rock stars, to buy more and keep up with the latest trends, it will lead to excessive borrowing, mounting debt, and it will definitely make it harder for you to save and invest. What consumerism does as a scam is it distorts our priorities. Consumerism can encourage us to prioritize material possessions and consumption over other important aspects of our lives, such as health, relationships, and personal growth. Now, some of the actions that you can take to evade the consumerism scam is first, you need to be grateful because you know what? Gratitude makes what you have enough. The second is you should avoid impulse purchases. Just think about that item that you must have and you need to purchase for about 24 hours before making the decision. I promise you, my rock stars, that 50% of the time, you don't even bother to buy it. You also need to set limits. And one way to do this is with the use of a budget. Set limits on the amount of money you want to spend on non-essential items and consider setting a budget for discretionary spending. Don't just spend money freely. Put a structure in place and the best way to do that is with a budget. Another step that you can take to avoid the consumerism scam is to limit exposure to advertising. Unsubscribe to some of those emails that you're getting that's advertising products that are tempting for those who have very little restrictions. Trained. Unfollow social media accounts that promote consumerism and overall just go through your emails, your messages and start unsubscribing to anything that's promoting consumerism. And the last step, my rock stars, is not something that I'm good at. It's to embrace minimalism. With a minimalistic lifestyle, you're able to focus on experiences more so than material possessions. And as such, you only own 
own what you need. So the next scam that's keeping us poor is the financial education scam. And the reason for this is because most of us lack financial education. We didn't learn how to manage our money properly. Who was there to teach us? It wasn't taught in schools and we were never taught how to invest, how to save or even how to budget. Because of this my rock stars, we make very poor financial decisions and we get stuck in this continuous cycle that is poverty. The other observation made about our educational system is that it teaches us to be employees and not entrepreneurs. And this was confirmed as I said earlier, which is why they will grant a student loan but not a business loan. You see the thing is, without a basic understanding of financial management, individuals are going to struggle to budget, they're going to struggle to save, they're going to struggle to invest and managing debt overall becomes problematic and this can lead to not just financial instability but also stress. The second thing that happens when you're not financially literate is you don't have a good awareness of financial products. When you don't have a good knowledge of different products that are out there what can end up happening is that you use high interest debt as opposed to taking advantage of your ability to save or invest. Do you know how many persons out there, my rock stars, did not understand that if they don't pay off their credit card balance and they only pay the minimum amount every month, they're gonna go into a downward spiral and they'll never be in a situation where they're not in debt? Paying your minimum required amount on your credit card is one of the worst decisions that you could ever make. And many of us are guilty of doing this. Another thing that happens when you're not financially literate is you become susceptible to financial scams. Without knowledge of financial management products, as an individual, you become a victim of financial scams. And most of these scams, they're promising quick and easy money and the math isn't mathing, but because you can't do the math, you don't even realize it's a scam. We see this all the time with Madoff, Olint or Cash Plus for those of us who live in Jamaica. Thinking that Cash Plus or Olint could pay you on average 10% in interest per month, the math wasn't math in my rock stars. But how do we know this when we lack financial education? Thank God I had gotten financially educated to a certain extent by then, so I wasn't a victim to those scams. But I've been a victim of others because I simply did not have the financial education to protect myself. What a lack of financial education does is it makes it extremely challenging for all of us to build wealth and secure a financial future and the result of that is long-term poverty. Now to not become a victim of the financial education scam, you need to get financial education. With financial education, the math starts making sense, my rock stars. Let me give you a practical example. Let's say you earn 15 US dollars per hour and you are recommended to save 20% of that in a bank, which is what financial education endorses for the masses. Now, if you start saving 20% of your $15.50 per hour and you do that from age 25 until you retire at age 65 in a regular bank, which is not paying you any superb interest or any interest at all. After 40 years, you would have accumulated 250,000 US dollars. Now, if you retire on 250,000 US dollars and you have any debt or any children, as an example, that's still in school, you're gonna be broke in five to 10 years. I promise you, my rock stars. And you know what happens? At retirement, you're starting to pray that God, maybe it's good if you take me because you're worried about starving to death and God forbid you can't pay your bills or sustain yourself and you have to rely on these children. And you know what's going to happen, my rock stars? You retire, you can't afford to feed yourself because you may live for another 20, 30 or considering that people are living to 100 years, even 50 more years. What are you going to do?
Now here's the difference when you're financially educated. You're gonna use a budget and you're gonna be well aware that 20% is not enough because the math will tell you that you will never be able to achieve financial independence doing that and you're gonna retire a pauper. So quickly, you're gonna realize that 50% is a much better number and that $15.50 is not enough for you to be able to save 50% of it and pay your bills and live a good life. So you know what you're gonna do? You're gonna seek additional sources of income and you're gonna figure out a way to make sure you are investing 50% of that $15.50 per hour, which works out to be about $1,300 dollars monthly. Financial education will also enlighten you and you're going to be aware of diversified index funds where you can invest a certain amount of money monthly, leverage compound interest, which is interest on interest and watch your money grow over time. So at $15.50, you invest in 50% of it, not in a bank because that's saving, but in an investment preferably an index fund. After the same 40 years, instead of 200 and odd thousand dollars, you're gonna have 3.4 million US dollars. Now you take that, you put it into a bond, and every year you get in interest 7%. You are making passively, whether you're sleeping or awake, 20,000 US dollars per month in income. My rock stars, that's enough for most of us to never go broke again. So you see the difference of financial education? Financial education will give you what you need to set very clear goals, such as paying off debt, building an emergency fund, saving for retirement. And what these goals do, my rock stars, is they keep you focused. Some of the places that you can get this financial education is obviously in books. You can also get it from watching YouTube videos like this one. Make sure these people live it and then teach it. And I'm not saying they have to have more money than you, but they must be practicing with success some of the things that they're telling you to do on your path to achieving financial independence. You can also get financial literacy through a course, or you can talk to a financial advisor, which by the way, I am not. I'm just here sharing my experience, sharing my opinion with you, but there are professionals out there who do this for a living, who are much more capable of giving you advice as it pertains to financial education. Now the next scam that's keeping us poor, that learning and understanding it will allow us to stop being poor and to be rich is what I'm referring to as the societal scam. Now society bombards us with all these messages that suggest that the key to happiness is to have the latest and greatest material possessions. This pressure that's out there, my rock stars, to keep up with the Joneses, the consequences of it is that we make very bad financial decisions that are not in our best interest. In addition to societal pressures, there are also economical pressures and pressures that come with the political system that seem to be in place to keep us broke or poor. As an example, just look at what is defined in many countries as the minimum wage. The wages for many low-paying jobs have just not kept up with the rising cost of living and it makes it very difficult for us to afford our basic necessities. Here's what the societal scam says. It says you must go to school, study very hard to become the best employee that you can be. Then you get a good job where you can work for your money because guess what? Investing is too risky. You then work at that job for as many years as is possible so that you can qualify for a pension and while doing so you start a family, you buy a house, take out a mortgage, you buy a car, take out a loan, you use credit cards to pay your bills. The societal scam says you send your children to the best schools that sometimes they must take a student loan to go to, which means you're starting the cycle all over again 
Kingston. And then after 60 years of working and building a family, you retire broke on a small pension that pays you enough for you to barely survive. And here's the thing, my rock stars, by the time you realize that this is a scam, you are in your 60s and hoping that you don't live long enough after retirement because you may just starve to death because you haven't saved enough or invested anything and God forbid you have to rely on your children because these children are not like we were back in our days when we knew that it was our responsibility to take care of our parents no their priority number one is them and maybe maybe you are priority number three after their husband or wife and their family when you realize that this is a societal scam and you find yourself failing to achieve financial independence in your lifetime guess what they start telling us my rock stars they start telling us that you should live within your means which in my opinion is a formula for mediocrity and i save that on the rockstar tv network where i share in a video that i'm not going to share anywhere else on social media exactly why you should never live within your means the second thing that they're going to tell you when you realize that this is a scam is that you you should never buy things that you can't afford that investing is risky you should put your money in a bank instead and that's probably why you lost those few dollars they tell you that rich people are greedy and that money is the root of all evil they start to brainwash us with these limitations and these beliefs that result in us remaining poor now my rock stars here's what they don't tell you to avoid this societal scam they don't don't tell you that this house that you took out a mortgage for that you're living in it's not making any money for you which means it's a liability yes it may appreciate in value assuming crime doesn't become a factor where you live that devalues your house but while you're living there all it's doing for those 40 plus years is costing you money and I know some of you are gonna say oh but a debtor having and living in my own house is peace of mind all all I have to say is peace of mind is great, but it has never put bread on my table. I don't know if it's putting bread on yours. What they don't tell you, my rock stars, is that if you had taken that same money that you put in the mortgage for the house that you live in and instead buy an investment property, let's say you buy that investment property and you pay a hundred thousand US dollars for it or the equivalent, and you rent it on Airbnb and you you're making 1800 US dollars per month you pay $900 to cover the loan for that property and you use the other $900 to pay the rent or the mortgage for the property that you live in that way your first investment is not just making you money but it's also paying your debt which is your mortgage why don't they teach us to go to school to become entrepreneurs what society needs to teach us my rock stars is that we should become financially literate at all cost that we should stop saving but instead invest that we should pay ourselves first always instead of living within your means what society should teach us is to focus on diversifying your income sources and increasing your income so that you can live a good life not a life of mediocrity and instead of society telling you that you can't afford it you need to ask yourself how can i afford this as opposed to never buying something you cannot afford also when you go against this society scam what you do my rock stars is you find ways to get your money or to get debt to work for you as opposed to you constantly having to work for your money now the final scam that we're gonna cover today is what I refer to as the system scam and this one is talked about across the globe which is where our economic system is designed in a way that benefits the wealthy at the expense of the poor it's obvious my rock stars that the more wealthy you get the more opportunities you have the more resources you have access to 
and a lot of these opportunities and resources, they're unfortunately not available to the poor. If I didn't know any better, I would say that the system is designed to keep the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer. But because I was born poor, I realized that there are ways to break this cycle so you don't have to become a victim of these circumstances. Here are some other ways that we become a victim of the system scam, my rock stars. Income inequality is one such example. The gap between the wealthiest individuals and the poorest individuals is growing constantly. This system is designed in a way that benefits those who have accumulated wealth while making it much more difficult for those in the lower income class to achieve financial stability. Another way that the system scams us is limited access to education. And education is a very important tool for upward mobility. But the cost of education is becoming increasingly unaffordable which is making it very difficult for the average person to get the skills that they need to secure higher paying jobs assuming your path is to work a nine-to-five job this same system is filled with discrimination I personally experienced a lot of this in the early part of my career when I was about to get promoted and the managing director at the time refused to pay me what the gentleman in the role who was Caucasian, he was an expatriate, he did have a lot more experience than me because I was 20 or 22 at the time, but we were going to be doing the same job, yet they wanted to pay me a fraction of what he earned. Discrimination based Based on factors such as race, gender, age, sex can limit opportunities for you and also limit access to certain resources. What this does, my rock stars, is it makes it increasingly difficult for individuals in marginalized groups or marginalized communities to break out of this poverty cycle. Another way that the system scams us is by not giving us access to affordable health care in many countries. Listen, my rock stars, access to basic health care is critical for us to maintain physical and mental well-being but many people can't afford the necessary medical care and what that leads to are costly health problems that perpetuate poverty now here are some actions my rock stars that you can take to not become a victim of the system scam focus on reducing debt overall and especially avoid high interest debts this includes credit cards unsecured loans unless you're using that debt my rock stars to make you money Another way to get ahead of the system scam is to invest and build wealth in some of the ways I explained earlier or even some of the other ways that I've used my YouTube channel to share with you my rock stars. You can also focus on building your skills. Seek out all the opportunities out there to build skills and gain experience that can actually help you not just to secure higher paying jobs but to start successful businesses as well. Another way to not be a victim of this system scam is to learn to advocate for yourself. If I didn't talk up and say I wasn't going to accept that job at that pay rate, knowing that the person who occupied the role before earned a lot more, you know what my rock stars, I would not be here today because the difference in income was significant. Not to mention all the benefits that I wouldn't have gotten, such as the paid apartment the motor vehicle, the paid utilities, and all that good stuff that came with the role. In advocating for yourself, my rock stars, if you encounter barriers to economic opportunity or any discrimination whatsoever, speak out and where necessary, seek help from advocacy organizations or even legal help if it's necessary. In this video here, my rock stars, where I speak about radical success secrets, I talk about the fact that you should stop asking for permission all the time. And if you have not watched it already, I encourage you to do so because what I share in this video is not what everybody else shares as the secrets 
for success is what most people don't want you to know. Now, all that said, my rock stars, it's so important for you to understand that poverty is not a life sentence. It's a human-made construct that can be overcome with the right mindset and mentality. Being born poor was one of my greatest superpowers to this day. And I'll tell you why, my rock stars. When you have no money to lose because you're born poor, you take a lot more chances because you have nothing to fear because you have nothing to lose. Because I knew exactly what it was like to be poor, I never feared being broke, my rock stars. And like I said, my rock stars, I never fear failure because I know exactly what it feels like to be at the bottom. The thing is, when we're born poor, we have nowhere to go but up. And the last thing why I believe being born poor is a superpower is because it gave me this burning desire to have a better life. This burning desire that being born poor created in me, peered with ambition, made me unstoppable, my rock stars. And I know it will do the same for you if you too were born into humble beginnings. And if after hearing that, my rock stars, you also think that being born poor is a superpower because it makes us unstoppable, I want you to write in the comments, unstoppable. Because today, my rock stars, we're gonna break that poverty cycle if you haven't done it already. So there you have it, my rock stars. Those are the five main reasons or systems or scams, as I refer to them, that I believe is keeping many of us poor. And as I shared, there is good news because now that you know, you are able to take the necessary steps to improve your financial situation. That said, thanks for watching. I will see you at the next video, remember to watch another video on my channel. That's all I ask of you and to become a rock star by subscribing. Until then, walk good. And for the first time in a long time, I'm alright. I've seen a lot of change.